Hello friends, this video on biotechnology principles part 11 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we will try to understand how do we separate the DNA fragments. Now there will be so many fragments. Now first of all we have to separate the DNA fragments then those DNA fragments should be visible to us so that we are able to select from those fragments. So let us see how do we do that. So DNA fragments formed by restriction endonucleases can be separated by a technique called gel electrophoresis. So what is this gel electrophoresis? It's a big name. So why this name? It has a gel because it makes use of agarose gel which is made from uh, agar. So this agarose gel is being used here that is why the name has a gel. Electrophoresis. Now the word electro is related to electricity. So here electricity is being used or electric field is set up as a part of the process. So that is why electrophoresis. Now this force is derived from the word pores or holes. Now in this structure, the if you look at the setup of electrophoresis, you will see that there are well-like structures or pore-like structure. So because of all these things being present in the process, the uh, entire technique is called gel electrophoresis. So this is how the setup looks like. So here you can see these yellow colored structures which you see they are like pores or holes or wells you can say. So these are the wells. And this entire plate like structure which you see it is nothing but it contains agarose gel. And then where is the electric field? The electric field is actually applied and when an electric field is applied what happens? The DNA fragments tend to separate from each other. So these are the DNA fragments. Now once the DNA fragments separate from each other they are made visible and then they then from those fragments the required DNA fragments are selected. So the question is, why do we want to do all this complication? Why do we want to separate the DNA fragments? Well, now the DNA fragments are formed by the endonuclease enzymes. But we are not interested in all the DNA fragments. We are only interested in the desired genes or you can say we are interested only in the gene of interest. Now that gene of interest will be located in only a specific fragment of DNA. Therefore DNA fragments need to be separated further so that the fragment with the desired gene can be isolated. So that is the purpose why we are doing this entire technique of gel electrophoresis. So here one important component is agarose gel. So what is this agarose gel? So let us try to understand from where do we get this agarose gel. So this gel is made from a naturally existing polysaccharide which is normally extracted from seaweed. So it is made from agar and that is why the name is agarose. So it is derived from agar. Now why do we use this agarose gel because it is something which is very easy to store, very easy to recover and it is also very easy to cast. So because of all these features of the agarose gel it is used here for uh, the process of electrophoresis. Now what happens, how does this entire concept of electrophoresis work, we will see that. Now other than the agarose gel we have wells as you can see here, these are pore kind of a structure where you can actually uh, enter something like for example the DNA fragments which we are talking about right now. So that is our input, all the DNA fragments which are produced by the restriction endonuclease. So those DNA fragments are put into these wells, so they are like um, you can say uh, a structure something which is dug on the agarose gel. So into these wells those DNA fragments are inserted. Electric field, now electric field is applied so that the fragments can actually move under the influence of electric field. So when you apply an electric field somewhat like this, this side becomes positive, this side becomes negative. So under the influence of this electric field, what will happen? The DNA fragments tend to move towards the positive pole because DNA is negatively charged. So it tends to move towards the positive pole. So what happens? The heavier fragments move slower whereas the lighter fragments move faster. So the high, lighter fragments tend to move more 
and the heavier fragments tend to move less. So this side you have the heavier fragments, whereas this side you have the have comparatively lighter fragments. So this side you have the heavier fragments, this side you have the lighter fragments. And this is how you are able to separate the DNA fragments. So smaller the fragment, farther it moves. So that is how this entire concept or this is how the structure of the gel electrophoresis is. So now let us talk about the technique in detail. Now what happens here is the DNA fragments are allowed to move through the agarose gel. Now it is a gel. So gel is like it is neither completely liquid nor solid. So some semi liquid kind of a thing. So through the gel the DNA fragments will be able to move. So this is how your uh, agarose gel looks like with the wells. So now what happens here, the DNA sample is put into these wells. So you put the DNA samples into the wells and now you apply an electric field. So this is how you have applied the electric field. Once the electric field is applied, now what happens? Now the DNA molecules, they are negatively charged. Why is DNA negatively charged? Because DNA contains the phosphate group and phosphate is negatively charged. You remember phosphate is PO4 3 minus. So it has so many phosphate groups. So obviously it is negatively charged. Now opposite charges attract each other. So this negatively charged DNA will be attracted towards the positive side. So the DNA fragments will start to move towards the positive pole. And now what happens? Anything which is smaller and lighter that will move faster. Now if you compare a very thin man with a very fat man and if you ask both of them to run, who do you think will be running faster? Obviously the one who is very thin because since his mass is very less he is able to run very fast. Similarly in this case also the smaller fragments are lighter and therefore they are able to move fast. Now when they move fast they tend to travel a larger distance so they tend to be on this side. So on this side you have comparatively lighter fragments whereas on this side you have comparatively heavier fragments because they, hard, they could hardly move so they travel with less distance. So distinct bands are formed which separates the fragments. Now this is how you can actually separate the DNA fragments based on their uh, weight, whether they are light or uh, heavy. So now you we are able to separate the DNA fragments. But still, what was our purpose? Our purpose was to exactly identify which fragment of DNA we need. That is which fragment of DNA contains our gene of interest. But for that purpose, we need to actually visualize the DNA fragments which were now which were which were separated. So for that purpose, there is another technique to make these fragments clearly visible because the fragments got separated, but they are not clearly visible. Visible. So to make them visible, they need to be stained. Now these DNA fragments are stained with ethidium bromide followed by ultraviolet exposure. Now what happens? Now when ethidium bromide is added, these fragments become clearly visible. So now, please make sure that before adding ethidium bromide, electric current should be switched off because as long as electric current is switched on, the movement of the DNA fragments will be taking place. Now, when you decide that, okay, enough of DNA separation, fragment separation has been done, then first of all, you switch off the electric current and then you add ethidium bromide. Now, as soon as you add ethidium bromide, some chemical reactions take place and as a result of which all the bands become clearly visible. So now what happens the DNA fragments are not only separated they are separated as well as they are clearly visible. So this is how the structure of ethidium bromide looks like. Now the bright bands are clearly visible so you can actually make out the bright bands. So specific gel piece. Now looking at the bright bands now you can decide which band you want or which piece of DNA do you want. So once you have decided the DNA fragment which you need, how do you bring it out of that entire agarose gel? So that particular gel piece is cut. So for example, this was the entire agarose gel plate and you have DNA like this. Now let us suppose you decided that you want this particular DNA fragment. So what do you do? You cut this portion with of the agarose gel. So the entire DNA fragment along with the portion of the gel is being cut from that agarose gel plate. So now 
what will you do? You, we do not want the gel. We just want the DNA. So then the DNA fragments are extracted from the gel piece. So here again we need a technique which can actually separate the DNA fragment from the gel because we are only interested in the DNA in its pure form. There should be nothing else present with DNA. So for that purpose there exists a technique called elution. So elution is the process by which DNA fragments, the selected or the desired DNA fragment is separated from the gel piece. So how is elution done? So what before that, what is the meaning of elution? So it is a process to extract one material from another by washing it with a solvent. So let us suppose you have two things which are very much mixed with each other and you want to separate them. So how do you separate? You wash it with a solvent and that is how you try to extract one material from the other. So here also you do the same thing. The solvent which is used here in this case to separate DNA fragment from the gel piece is the water. So now what happened? The DNA fragments were separated and isolated and now the next step is this isolated DNA in its pure form need to combine with the vector DNA to form recombinant DNA. So that is going to be our next step. So let us try to see how exactly the formation of recombinant DNA takes. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.